Hey everybody, here we're looking at a Best Tech Power Supply. You're probably thinking right now, I've never seen a Best Tech Power Supply look like this before. This is very unusual. Where did you get this one at? Well, here's the catch about this power supply. This power supply has been recased. This is a Best Tech ATX 312Z Rev CDR power supply. Used to be an HP many years ago. And basically what I did was I recased it. Into a dual fan case. With a switch and everything. If you notice it still has the indication LED. It's right there. This case used to belong to a Raymax. I think 420 watt power supply. It was a Sun Pro. I've actually still got the PCB to it still intact. I mean, everything's still together. Use that for a future project. But I figured, what the heck, I'd take this Best Tech power supply that needs to be recapped, and I went and recapped it and gave it a nice home. Here's the rear fan you can probably see inside. The power supply seemed to work out pretty well in this case. We're going to take the cover off so you have a look inside. You know, it's funny, I did this quite a while ago, just never did make a video about it. And I actually did do a modification to a um, to an older Allied slash Deer power supply yesterday. And that modification was successful. More on that later. Go ahead and take this cover off. See what I've done to this thing. You're probably amazed. Which I have to say, I haven't actually installed it into a computer yet. It's been sitting up on my storage bench. Be a nice little standalone power supply, I mean backup power supply for a basic computer. I'm sure it would power the Mid Tower Lux Black Max without any issue. I didn't do a full recap on this you know, I did just a partial recap. Basically here's what I've done. The Best Tech PCB is wired for a single fan. That I was able to wire in two fans. Right in the middle. And the fan control circuitry seems beefy enough to run two fans. What I did is I, I chose two lower amperage fans that pretty much nearly met the same power requirements as the original Jamicon fan that was in the first power supply. And I've tested this thing and it runs the fan just fine. What's funny is it runs the fan so slow that the back one half the time doesn't even start turning yet because it's at such a low voltage. But anyways, let's look at the primary side. The ATX 312Z is built pretty well. If you notice how these heat sinks are, it's, per it's a perfect design because of the way the fans are on this case. The fans blow directly across these two heat sinks, keeping them good and cool. The only bad side is the secondary side probably doesn't get that much air. Basically, what I did is I used the same voltage slater switch. I took the receptacle, the same receptacle, and soldered in an X capacitor just like it would be on a typical Best Tech. And I drilled a hole in the case to mount the indicator LED, which works. I'm going to plug this thing in and turn it on once I get the, get the cover back on. This unit works just fine.
just want to show you that it is possible to recase a power supply. I've done it a couple, a couple of times, actually. I think this case here looks a lot better than the stock case that has a um, punched grill. This one has a wire grill, but the only thing was the fan that I chose was so thick I had to put the grill on the outside, which may cause some issues on mounting this thing in the computer. There might be a gap between the case and the power supply. That's not too big of a deal. Let's get you a nice little overview of the inside of a 312Z power supply. The 312E is um, not too bad either. It doesn't ha it doesn't have the five the true transistor five volt standby design that was on the 25012E. This is also IC controlled. The five volt standby IC is down there below where you would normally find that second transistor. This is a single switch, a uh, single transistor design. For the main switcher. Anyways, I'll go ahead and throw the case cover back on. I'm gonna plug in and show you how how everything looks. The rear fan is LED. Actually, no, both fans are not LED. I just they're, they're clear. I guess I didn't have any LED fans at the time. power supply works just fine no problems at all and I've already got the green and black wires sorted together so that way power supply will turn on I'm going to demonstrate it working I'm going to grab a power cord power cord's a bit on the short side. I'm going to show you this thing does work. Make sure you can see the status LED down there in the corner. Go next to the switch. Turns right on. The status LED works just fine. Both fans work. As you see, this power supply um, starts the fans that are pretty low voltage. And this rear fan is actually not a very fast one. That's why it's spinning so slow. The transistor that's in the fan circuit seems pretty beefy. Like it could run two fans just fine. I feel a small breeze of air coming out the air. It's pretty typical for a best tech. This is a very quiet power supply. You can see those two heat sinks back there. Getting just a small breeze of air. And just for the heck of it, I'll go ahead and check the voltages. With my multimeter. I'll go ahead and demonstrate how to do that. check your voltages on power supply you can do this um, basically with the power supply sitting like this I do this all the time when I recap them you can also do some testing when it's in the computer you can do you can test your 5 volt and 12 volt power outputs when it's in the computer but I'm going to demonstrate everything here I will connect the negative side of the multimeter to one of the ground hookups on this power supply and I'm going to test 12 volts turn my multimeter on set where you can see it I'm going to angle the camera up just a little bit you can just barely see that display I'm going to test the 12 volt output. Just using one of the Molex connectors. Getting 11.85. Test 5 volts. 
5.25. Now, just so you know, many power slides out there, especially ones that are group regulated, will give you kind of crazy numbers when nothing's attached to them. Many power slides out there do have dummy loads them, like little resistors in them for sort of a dummy load. This is the 3.3 volts. Going to test the power good, which is gray, which is giving a high signal, which is a one in terms of digital electronics. Going to test the minus 12 volt, which is blue. Getting minus 11.8. We'll test the 5 volt standby rail. Getting right around 5 volts. This one's very, very well regulated. It's an IC design. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the paper clip out of the HX connector. It's a power supply just shut off. You might be able to see the fan stop. I'll go ahead and shut off the main power switch. Let it discharge. This one will probably take a little while because it's got 680 microfarad caps in it. You can speed this up by bridging the green and black wires again. So this one didn't turn on. Every unit's a little bit different. Going to hit the power on. Goes right to 5.01. Now, digital multimeter is not that fast. And of course, with switch mode power supplies, you're going to have a little bit of a voltage spike when you first apply power. You have to have an oscilloscope to really see it. But anyways, just a review. And this is my recased, recased Bastec HCX312Z power supply and if you're wanting to test a power supply the 3.3 volt lead is orange plus 5 volts is red black is ground yellow is 12 volts blue is minus 12 volts and on you see 5 volt standby is purple and on older units that have a minus 5 volt rail, that wire is white. This, one, this power supply is a much newer revision, so it doesn't have a minus 5 volt rail. So anyways, any questions or comments, feel free to ask and thanks for watching.